Hello, everybody. This is episode 245 of the Gold Squadron Podcast. I'm your host, Dio Morales, and today I'm joined by Will. I am the king of this castle, Hagwood. Great to be here, Dion. Ryan, John Cena is a national treasure, Staniszewski. Yep. Uh, not only is he one of the greatest WWE wrestlers ever, but he is a hilarious actor and has been in great movies and a new TV series called Peacemaker that you should watch not with your kids. <laughs> it's not rated for anything under 17, I think. I I, I agree. And I'm also, uh, I'm also, if you haven't seen the last Fast and the Furious movie, I, it's not that it's a good movie. It's that you will have a good time watching it. Understand the difference between those two things. You'll have a good time watching it. John Cena's in that one. Anyway, um, I want to start today's podcast by talking about Adepticon. If you haven't heard yet, um, Gold Squadron is going to be the ones running the event at Adepticon. It is Gold Squadron run. Uh, super excited about that. And while I don't have the full prizing yet, um, what I can say, one piece of information you know, one new inf piece of information that is uh, uh, that I can say. So first, AMG is going to be providing uh, prize support for that event, official prize support for that event. And we will be giving out world's invites, official world's invites for this event so i'm ex i was extremely excited to see that in my email get confirmed um because they said hey call it a grand championship and i was like wait a minute does that mean what i think it means and the answer was yes. So um, World's Invites are going to be up for grabs at Adepticon. More details to come um, for all of that. And my understanding is they are hoping to do a Worlds in 2022. Like in this year, they, they are hoping to do one. So uh, super excited about that. I know that there was definitely some players uh, who were like, but is, is it a real event? You know, I was joking about it last week. I was like, you know, if they gave us world's invites, do you consider that an official event? I don't know how much better you can get outside of AMG actually running it. But, uh, yeah. So, there you go. Gold Squadron event. World's invites on the line. Let's go. I'm, I, you guys, man. So hyped to have seen that in my email. Mm. Uh, wow, I wonder where worlds will be held. Uh, I don't. I don't know about all that. I don't. I don't know. All I. I know about Adepticon. That's that's. Is this in person? Yes, this is an in person event at Adepticon in March, and uh, super excited about that. Uh, we did set up a a questions channel on our Discord. If you have any questions about the event, I've been fielding those. Um, just, uh, you know, I had various questions. Of course, uh, one of the questions that came up was like, Dion, are you going to do any type of like online event associated with this? And the answer is no. Uh, we're going to be real busy with the in-person stuff. There's, there's, a, <laughs> there's a lot of things um there's a lot of things going on uh, there's a lot of things going on in there so we can't uh run some type of like simultaneous event with that um uh, yeah but of course we'll have the stream going uh will's gonna be taking the helm on that one and uh, should be should be good how many worlds invites are up for grabs um i don't know I don't know. I would guess more than one because it had an S at the end of the sentence that I got. Minimum there, dose. Minimum do at least two. Uh, you know, they'll be they'll be in the main event. Uh, but yeah, that should. Uh, I I am excited for that because I know that there is definitely a population in uh, in the community that's like you know. It just show me, show me invites, or or your, or it's not worth my time. Essentially, what uh, what we get there, but uh, nonetheless, that is that's what I got for today for Adepticon. And once I know, 
once I know more, I will let you guys know. Uh, but from from the information I have, uh, AMG and Asmodi have a couple of, like announcement stuff to kind of get off their. They gotta they gotta get some some things going, and then once their information is out. We, I'll have more essentially. So, uh, as for prizes right now, you know that uh, if if it's that level, if we're giving away worlds invites, I would expect the prize support that we're getting with that to be pretty nice. So, uh, super super excited about that. Uh, but today. Our podcast brought to you by our GSP patrons. Becoming a patron makes you a part of the large group of supporters that GSP has. And I will tell you right now, Adepticon, oh, like I have already had to spend a significant amount of money on like equipment and stuff. Because here's the thing, right? AMG used to hire a company to do this, right? That had all the things. And now we're doing it. So I don't have all the things. Some seem simple, but like those timers on a stand, I had to go buy go buy a couple of those because we got to be able to put the time somewhere. Uh, gonna need to get a couple printers and and and, and things like that. Blue vests for the uh, for the judges, right? Like where th this is this is where those uh, those pesos go. So uh, thank you to everybody who has become a patron today. Blue vests with gold squad stripes, like blue I, GSP with the yellow GSP. I wish I wish I did not scrounge on the customized ones. Uh, I just got generic blue. Maybe we can customize them ourselves. We got we got stickers. We can make something happen. <laughs> Uh, but should be good. Uh, Mega Sofer says, any way we could help so that you could have a day to play, or do you think you'll be too busy? I will not be playing during the day in any capacity. Uh, if I play, it might be a late night game because I'm going to be staying on site for Adepticon. I will be there. So maybe an after hours game or something like that. I might be around. But my, my job while i'm there is to make sure you guys are having a good time that that's that's what i'm going to be focused on all right S sending some buffalo love to gsp thank you so much uh can we talk about patches support oh patches i can maybe do some patches I, I i know some peeps i know some peeps so should be good um but yeah that's that's the adepticon update what i want to focus on now is kind of it's we got to talk about lvo because lvo is part of the road to adepticon which with the timing we said this last week with the timing of where adepticon is where lvo is lvo won't quite have all the rules done baked released by the time that event comes up here in a couple weeks but there's a good chance that at Adepticon, it has all the new things. It is the brand new, brand new stuff. So, um, what we're going to focus on today is we're going to do a bit of ranking. All right. We're going to be ranking the ships, the ship chassis in each faction between S, which is the top tier, A, B, C. And we, of course, do have the dumpster tier. As we go, now we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna we're gonna shift the uh, the screen here so you guys can see what we're working with. All right, here we go. Now we have access to a whole pile of ships, uh, but the idea here is we're only we're not gonna pull out each pilot card for every every ship. The ship itself will represent the best that that ship has to offer. All right, so that's how we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be ranking them, and then at the end, I want to talk a little bit about just like faction rankings. I went ahead and I uh, you know I have emblems for each of the uh, each of the factions. Oops, I need to shift my screen down for each of the factions, and we'll we'll go ahead and do a uh, a actual fact faction ranking, uh, just kind of seeing where the ships lie, and then our our opinions there. So it should be it should be fun to uh, to kind of get through this and uh, and see what we can do. Uh, I know the 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 playerness is a little awkward in this, isn't it? Because of the way, there you go. Will, Will you're you're there. That the, that's the best way I can hide you. 
<laughs> All right. So, um, my friends, where do you where do you want to get started? How do you guys want to approach this? You guys want to go one faction at a time? You want to jump around? What do you think? I'd say we do probably one faction at a time, right? Just to encompass it all. Yeah. All right. So let's um, let's go ahead, and I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. want to shift my screen here real quick, uh, because I want to show people one thing because one of the things with this black box format so things that are likely to be in standard and we're, we're making the best guess with what amg has told us uh you can see a quick peek here of the number of ships in each faction obviously the the newer stuff the prequel and sequel factions have the least number of ships rebels have by far the most available i mean they're the main characters in the stories not surprised right but uh just gonna go ahead and and see uh just take a quick peek at uh at what we have there and we're gonna go ahead and uh, ryan let's let's have you pick what do you wanna what do you wanna tackle first which faction uh let's go start with the largest let's do rebels first all right let's go ahead we're gonna we're gonna grab us some uh some some rebellion we'll go ahead put it here on the edge and uh pick a ship any ship and we'll just we'll kind of we'll trade around here and we'll talk about it as we go all right i'm gonna start big we're going with a falcon um man i have been doing a lot of testing of falcons recently um i think they could be really good we already talked about how in road that the random player order helps potentially helps support ships that don't need to follow a pointed forward arc uh -huh. and this is a big base ship also with boost so it can go many uh very fast and get around flanks really well um got one of the best probably one of the best pilots in the game han solo i6 his ability really really good uh mod that's not really a mod but um can pack a huge uh big punch of damage if you have something like this standard trick shot leia's really good people have used uh lando a lot don't see a lot of chewy um i i don't know if it's going to be a mainstay in the Repu rebel faction because a lot of people are still pretty well set on the token sharing but i'm at least going to put this in the a i'm very close to considering s tier to be quite honest i'd like to get will and you know, to put oh man uh, i think chewy in the generic uh, on average keep it out of s that uh, and it's really well no, well yes but i was gonna say I, I still other think than leia could be close to s lando's maybe close to but lando's pretty predictable right. well that's what i was gonna say that other than maybe leia who could theoretically run without upgrades uh and be as good as she can be right um but things like Han and Lando, you need investments and in. you need either a force point for Han, you need nine and, and or K2SO for mm -hmm. uh, Lando. So I think they might be the, uh, what do I say? Um, pushed into the S tier in their builds, but not maybe necessarily their, their original chassis. All right, and now now here's a question. One of the th I mean, it's we're the ones doing the rankings, right? It is a little bit tough, especially with rebels, um, because of how much synergy they work with, right? There is a lot of like external things. So when we, for instance, we get to the, the token fact, token sharing mm. friends, we can kind of just clump them up. Like, hey, it's these group of things together could make S. Oh, so sure. are, are we thinking the Falcon on its own? uh the best mm. that it has to give if we're talking about uh what sounds to be like leia and han are they right. would you say that they are s tier who see uh isophane it's always isophane thanks for joining us by the way uh but isophane pointing out the new changes to asteroids a big factor in these falcon place mm. uh uh with kanan before you could just land on an asteroid, ditch the stress, and then still take an action of your choice. Mm. Same thing with Leia. Just like, whatever, it's hard turn onto the debris or gas cloud, you still get a force point and you're fine. Right? Um, but now they have to maneuver much more, particularly 
uh, to get to keep that side arc on target. So I think I with the new rules, it might not be too bad when you consider that the gas clouds are much more forgiving for falcons, though. At the same time, as long as you complete your maneuver over it, you can still boost. Mm, that's true. You still get your action. Well, I'm, I'm, yeah, I was thinking more. I'm just like landed right on a debris. Yeah, I mean that was obviously a shot. lot more forgiving, especially with Kane and crew on Han, oh, which is sure, a very sure. common trick. Alright, I think I think I think A is fine. They're they're good, but not uh what do I say? Overwhelming. All right. I'm with you guys there. Now let let's go ahead and take a second and talk about the the whole token sharing uh shenanigans that happen right so i went ahead I, I grabbed kyle we have like the a wings as well as what it's a u-wing and sometimes an x-wing like this this is a squad in and of right. itself right like those those four ships sometimes the b-wing yeah because hera, hera and the b-wing's been showing up now hera a or hera b really mm -hmm. it's been more of hera b but you can use either one yeah so this this idea of token sharing this this set of ships like is is that still s tier we saw it show up in the very first galaxies event i was actually going through and i, I started shipping champions or packing the champions uh prizes here and like andrew oler andrew oler it, won the very first galaxies with it we didn't see it win again but it was always around still s tier mm -hmm. Mm. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I I, I, I think I would so. To agree. I I think the pieces for sure. I think a little bit less of the Ewing version. I really think it's been trimmed down to, um, Kyle Hera in some capacity, whether it's the B or the A, mm -hmm. and then Garvin, and then also Wedge. People have gone for the offensive Wedge instead of like the max token stack because the Benthic version doesn't fit anymore with the points adjustment to Hera when Hera was cheaper that whole uh, fatter bent it could fit right because you can get the the Leia which was pretty important for you wings at the time all right cool so we'll go ahead we'll place those four in s we'll uh, we'll drop that u wing down to a context is everything right uh will now we kind of have a smattering of other rebel ships that haven't really mm -hmm. seen play maybe the sheathapede is the next one that sees the most play out of these that are actually there uh sure yeah i would probably argue white wings actually see more yeah. play than the sheathapede um let's go let's go with white wings then uh i would say uh, that they are solid b not great um but you know uh, as they should be the standard workhorse <laughs> <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> hold on. I know Will's been a very big proponent of Dutch, especially. Oh, yeah. I've played around with Horton, even. There's a lot of rebel ships that want to be in range one that are pretty solid. Nora, including uh, both variants, and Sabine in the A Wing. I uh, very, very much uh, agreed there. Uh, and yeah, they, they're one of the few chassis where uh, I think every <laughs> Evan, sorry, Evan, but okay. most pilots are viable, uh, including the generics. So that uh, one, once your generics and a named, at least a named pilot are good, I think it automatically puts you into B tier. Uh, what about that Sheetapede though? I mean, you might as well just move it down a little bit because uh, that's an A tier ship, in my opinion. It's it's A for AP5, realistically. It's it's the AP5 yeah. ship. Um, Agreed. And, Best coordinator uh, in the game, right? Yeah, Dio knows. Uh, well, AP5 works really, action really well game. when paired with RZ1s. It's mm -hmm. a good time. So Dio has it, no problem with Shara Bay. She's, she's, she's just fine. So where 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 do we want to settle a. in? A well, tier. We'll go A. It, yeah, it's a I'd it's a combo a. piece, but a powerful combo piece at that. It's it's a piece that is only a support ship. There's a lot of other right. ships in Rebels right. right now that can support and attack. Right. Right. Now. And that's what you're seeing in the S tier. 
All right, let's let's go ahead. Let's take out the garbage here. Z95 and Rebel Tie Fighter. Oh man, Rebel Tie Fighter is dumpster. That's okay. I no! would argue against the Z95 what? being dumpster Dude, though. What? I'll, uh, man, can I fight? Yeah, you put it at least in C C tier. Come on, twenty six so points so for what, Sabine. Twenty six points for a only force point like, on three don't... utility with a white evade. Ezra maybe, but that was only when Sense existed. He was one of the cheapest Sense carriers. I mean, he's one of, still one of the cheapest ships in the game at twenty six points. Ezra's twenty six. Uh, twenty six for force point white evade. Okay. Three agility. All right. I thought he was still like 30. <laughs> no, him and Sabim, I think it can get the TIE Fighter into C. Out of, pull, ripped out of the dumpster. Ripped out of the dumpster by two pilots. Yeah. Just, oh, just you... go ahead and put it like right here. Like just above. <laughs> Looking at the dumpster. <laughs> just recently pulled out. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the Z probably, yeah. Blunt's, Blunt's barely saving it, and there's not a lot of... Uh, missile synergy, yeah. Uh, other than the new targeting synchronizer for E wings, but Look, no. Clearly, there is a game where Blount proved himself better than Fenrir. Okay, <laughs> Blount so. is good. I'll give Blount. <laughs> Blount is good. I, I would say, uh, but kind of beyond a, that, C, no. C tier because I, I think Blount is a really good piece. It's one of the few pieces that can add a third die attack at a really cheap cost for not that difficult a thing to do. True that. True that. All um, right. We're arguing. We're arguing the amount of the dumpster, apparently. <laughs> Nora, uh, we ha I pulled out here Nora Wexley in the ARC 170. Um, we know, like, Nora herself, her ability is great, right? Adding an evade there. But overall, the ARC hasn't performed, whether that's because people aren't just taking, are just not taking it right now. Um, but, I mean, you have – you don't have a generic, which – Usually, that for, it seems like it's a cost issue for these mm -hmm. Arc One Seventies. What you get for the value? Yeah, because you if you look at like Garvin's, not that much more than his X Wing version. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like forty nine to forty six or something like that. Uh, Shara, who's uh, been doing great in the A Wing, so it's not like her abilities. Uh, the reason you would fly her and then uh if the sand i always think i'm saying that wrong but uh while great an amazing ability uh i3 and one agility uh and not very maneuverable yeah they the the reason arcs are good in republic is that they're cheap they're like 42 points uh -huh. there were 42 for a long time and that that's uh, something that the Rebel Arcs can't compete with. So I just want to clarify because uh, Dion, you would say, so are we are we taking the best of and ranking the, the, it, or are we the, taking the overall? The, be the best that it has to offer. The best. Because what what Nora is? Nora is a big difference over everyone else. True. True that. True that. Um, yeah, Nora. Nora is B at least. I don't know yeah. if I can put put here realistically in a are we ranking on the purpose of lvo only or also considering potential objective play lvo okay L L just, LVO. Just as soon as objectives come boxes. out nora shoots up a lot i think medium base potentially occupying multiple potentially uh scoring multiple objective point counts for her because she's a medium base or higher if that rule's still in play um and just being range one of something, which for objective will probably be even easier to do, makes her stay around longer contesting those objectives. So, but not objective. She's B. She's the best offer, so she'll be there. All right. The VCX. Four dice gun. Tons of points. Uh, Hera can, allows you, as for right now, as for right now, as of July... Uh, not July, she'll be January 17th, 2022. Sorry, I jumped a few months ahead. Um, <laughs> she allows you to change your dial. Uh, I know Marcel's a big fan. We've seen him do well. Um, is I'm the best to offer actually Hera, or is it someone else? I'm, I'm going to propose maybe Callus or even really? Kanan. 
Callus oh, or Keenan? Okay. What, what, what are we thinking? Because I, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm, Keenan I'm, I'm has been tearing it up lately, though. Uh, you get uh, dorsal, bring a dorsal. You're Keenan, after all. You care about Erks. Mm -hmm. um, and then anything from Leia to Magva to probably not Saw, but uh, the the range of crew they can get onto Keenan. Mm -hmm. um, and he's. Oh, man, having the force and not just the the modifications you're going to get, because you can just get a dice modifications anywhere, but being able to use that force to help out other people um, in the Rebels, I think we typically see him with what, like uh, other force users, Ahsoka and Luke normally, mm -hmm. um, I think has been the popular build, at least uh, off the top of my head. Man, yeah, Kanan... It, is making a resurgence in my mind. Uh, I, to me, that's a solid A tier ship. Mm, you could, I don't know, a, <sighs> a tier with a foul. I mean, there's a lot of times where the unfortunate thing is, even though it has the four dice, four die front arc gun, and between either saw crew, passive sensors with token sharing, which is plentiful in rebels, the ability to be double modified is pretty easy. Uh, mm -hmm. But when I end up kitting these out to even the slimmest version I want, I'm still close to the cost of a Leia or Lando Falcon. Really? And yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, Callus with just passive sensors is 73. And the mm, cheapest yeah, Falcon Leia's I consider 77. is Leia 77, which is only four more points, which I mean, I could throw a couple more and be close to Leia, but the time on target, the boosting big base ship, it's, I think the Falcon a lot of time just outclasses the VCX, even though you have a higher spike damage potential with the VCX. But you have to put more into it to get that reliable spike damage. Whereas the Falcons, almost at base, whether it's Lando's ability or Leia's force, can get reliable attacks, even though they're not four dice, they're three. I like it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to agree on the B tier. I'm going to agree on the B tier. Okay. Yeah, I can live with that. All right, so there you go. There, there's Rebels. There's Rebels. Our first take on Rebels. We'll pick another faction. All right, uh, let's go the other end of the spectrum. First order. First order. All right. Yeah, the we smallest go. black box count right now. Uh, I mean, you know where we're starting. Uh, that's the silence, sir. Kylo Ren, uh, proven. I mean, he was in the Alderaan winning list. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he is just so good. We've seen other silencers, especially with the intuitive controls, do well. The generics have always done well, whether they're under 50 points or at 50 points, uh, that the, the silencer with its... Uh, Auto thrusters ability to double reposition or the preposition in the system phase. Man, so good. Uh, what, five health? No, six health. Four and four hull, two shields on three agility. <sighs> Doesn't get much better than that. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, I think we got we got to take a second and look at uh, look at the other. The 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 not as popular Kylo. You know, we the whisper was released. People try. They're like, I got a third force. Look at me. <laughs> and what happened immediately? Back to the silencer. <laughs> there was, yep. right? it, it was that, that third agility makes a huge difference. The better dial makes a huge difference. I mean, it's, it's a total – maybe part of the problem is that it, it is a completely different chassis and requires a completely different way to play – but people are trying to play the whisper like the silencer. But I right. haven't seen anything that also makes the whisper make me go like, that's hot. I don't got anything. No. Nope. I mean, it, it, uh, might, yeah. it, it might be the fir first ship chassis we might. I, I, I'm almost considered putting in a dumpster but with like a three force pilot it's almost crazy to think about that but like i'm, again, I'm with you man i what I, no I, you're crazy he's crazy i'm, not, I'm definitely not putting oh. anything even like B no it's b, b for me no b uh 
I have uh, played a lot with uh, Instinctive Aim, Concussion, Missile, Kylo. And in those games that I was having success with them, I maybe did like one or two jams. I was playing him as like a souped up SF and less like a interceptor, right? Okay. I think that's that's the the mindset that you're saying, Dion. Like I was flying him as a turret. Like I don't, I never cared to try to arc dodge or anything. Um, I was flying him like a fire spray, basically. But I, uh, I agree though. Like if you put like predator and like try to go in for like uh, range one without double reposition. Uh, yeah, I, I, it definitely is not going in A. All right. How about I, I fight you to a B and a half. B and a half. It, I mean, I could, I could, take, and so, C and I, a half. I could, I could, I could settle for C, but it's got a big Kylo asterisk on it that Kylo I mean, is yeah. significantly better than all the other pilots. But man, do all the other pilots suck. Yeah, they, they, they like the chassis they, is, the chassis is only good. worth it because Kylo is a force pilot at I five and exists there. Like he, it's he, so crazy to think about a potential ship with a pilot in another ship, the Silencer, that may be considered one of the best ships in the game, Kylo Silencer, to go to Kylo Tie Whisper and might be one of the worst ships in the game. Mm-hmm. All right, so th there, there's your asterisk right there. I put, I put a little first order symbol next to it for you, Will. <laughs> Thank all you. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. As I agree, all the other ones, C tier all day. Maybe even dumpster. Like maybe you shouldn't even be flying them. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But, yeah. Let's keep going. Let's keep it going. The Psy Shuttle. I figure like Malris is kind of like the premier pilot that a lot of people think of when you think Psy Shuttle. Uh, being able to get those re-rolls on blanks. Um, and with the black box, there is no Upsilon. Because people would be like, oh, let's go. Let's go get me a Tavson. <laughs> Actually, no, you can't. Oops. Nope. Ah. Get it? Oops. <laughs> So with with the Upsilon out of the out of the picture, the size shuttle does does the value go up now only because the non existence of the Upsilon? Oh yeah. I, yeah, it's the I only guess. it's the only dedicated coordinator in that faction right now. Uh, and I think then in addition to that, uh, the only crew carrier in that faction as well. So really, the really only see dedicated many support. Really, using crews though, because it was just tabs in with no upgrades. Just, just go well, do tabs yeah. and I things. I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah, but like Terex and Pyre, uh, a couple of the other ones, uh, Phasma, as well. I think are very good. I don't know if Phasma's black box, but uh, it has potential. I, I do think even the generic has value if you're trying to bring a certain crew, but. You're like you just want to bring Agent Terex crew, and you just want to coordinate. You don't need to coordinate I five. You're not looking to get Malrus's ability. You just want mm -hmm. to coordinate and have Agent Terex well, Ter crew. Terex is a calculate coordinated at the start of engagement, right? Like pretty that's much. How I think about it. Like here's here's your force charge, <laughs> right? So so do we do we just slot it into B because it is a facilitator of things? I, I, I think, I think B. B is a solid choice, yeah. Between Maller, what Malaris and Gideon can do to swarms uh, versus like what a single one can do to help out aces, it, it fits in so many lists that that. And you you just said it too. The moment your moment your highest initiative and your generic are viable, you're automatically in B tier. There it is. All right, let's go. Uh, well, maybe something a little less exciting. The Typho. The, the the workhorse or one of the workhorses of the of the first order, uh, scorch probably being one of the more popular ones. Um, How about that cadet and Revis? Get those I ones. Mm, I do. Uh, I Revis, do love you're Re right. Sorry, I forgot about Revis. I do love Revis, but I don't think Revis or any of them get this ship into uh, a high tier. My my gut reactions C. Just because it's never, uh, what do I want to say? It's never the first ship you reach for. It's always that filler, 
Uh, you never build a squad around having static in it or anything like that. So, so, so he, here's a question, all right? Let's put the SF and the FO together, all right? Let, let's put them next to each other. Um, you're talking about kind of that, like, when you're slotting things in, most of the time, are you going to prefer to take an SF over an FO? Oh, yeah. Every day. Yep. Uh, depends. What your squad has, what's left. Like, would I rather put in an SF blank with no ability for 32 points left over, or would I rather put in... Uh, long shot or muse with proud tradition or something i'd probably actually take the fo with proud mm -hmm. tradition because they have a similar time on target and they don't like float away like the sfs do they'll actually be able to turn around mm -hmm. and get mods for the attack so it, it's 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 it depends like do you have the points for backdraft i'd probably do that <laughs> <laughs> backdraft's really good don't need to spend many points on it just point the arc to the back and have fun all right. It depends on what's available. All right. So so what I'm hearing is like they're around. They're filler ships. They're not sure. they're they're not primary source material for your lists. Uh, I just that kind of for me that just sounds like B tier. Like it's there. Yeah. It, there's usable pieces in it uh, overall. Let's take a second. Quick draw. Quick draw. I was about to say, we, we got to probably <laughs> address quick draw because that right. has been a feature piece for some people. Mm -hmm. Right. And I know there's some people being like, wait a second, value on quick draw has gone up. You can guarantee damage and you and anybody can be Mitch Hurst now. Anybody. <laughs> right. Like I can be Mitch Hurst too. Look at me. If you guys don't know what I'm referring to, go back to the Denver System Open 2019 play of the game, play of the Play, play of the series was hilarious um so this quick this quick draw move the needle on the sf overall no not to me anyways nope too too many other things exist within around the same points or that that should be feature pieces over quick draw mm -hmm. high low for example high bas that we'll get to soon We'll get to right now. Here we go. <laughs> Ty, 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 <laughs> he's, he's the best. He's the best. All right. Ty BA, Von Reg, Hollow uh, have been the mainstays out there. People have been messing with the provocateurs. I haven't seen too much success out there, but they're trying. They're trying. Stop trying. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Stop oh, trying. Man. It's Stop just trying. Von Reg and Hollow the ship. Don't do it. I'm sorry, Mitch Hurst. I know you love Kylo 3 provocateurs stop it's not good it's not good so yeah. let's let's focus on hollow <laughs> sorry <laughs> let's focus on hollow and von reg uh is it s tier i mean they're they're a at least but man i feel like those provocateurs and emperor are bringing down the overall ship though i i think they i think it could definitely stay with a if we're thinking what the best is being brought to the table Mm, Hollow's true. presence has gone down a bit. Um, I'm really surprised that they're not allowing three silencers in Hollow to still exist because I don't even think that'd be that overbearing of a list that now doesn't fit anymore. Mm -hmm. At least I don't. It might still fit, but if Hollow doesn't get proud tradition, which is like you brought kind of Hollow to do. The, the, right. Do, yeah. Do do, do K yeah, Turner Sloop and get your token. Be fine. And do it you again. See. You just gotta sub in an SF for that third silencer. It's fine. Or tie or a uh, bomber now. Ooh, this yeah, is... bomber. Nice little bomber out there. Meet me. Another segue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as long I as think we're gonna wherever if, the tie BA goes. Uh, I think if we're doing best of A tier for the the interceptor, uh, what what Von Reg and Hollow can do is quite absurd at some points. And then with that segue, we're going into that Thai FO bomber, uh, which as of late has been the probably the, the biggest shakeup for Thai FO for excuse me for first order overall. Uh, it adds utility that was just like not existent in the faction whatsoever, and we've seen it do amazing. Uh, we had said that essentially it's as good as a Thai BA. Would you guys agree? Oh yeah, I agree. I think yeah. between Grudge, the generics, both whether you go feedback ping I3s, which have actually found value with the movies, mm -hmm. and the, the base generics just to bring something with cheap 
system phase boost mind drops mm -hmm. and then all the way up to breach who has obviously was part of alex mogison's winning list yep so i mean it's it's pretty oh, man so so good and that's one of the ships where every nearly every pilot has value like we've been kind of like nitpicking here and there but right there we just rattled off you know usable versions for nearly every pilot which is yeah, uh we, we which just don't rare. talk about dread or scorch they're just yeah. don't talk Oof. about it. <laughs> just around they just don't around. talk about boo no <laughs> <laughs> i mean they honestly though they're only like one or two more points than the generic like you could reach for those abilities if you wanted to right like, if you got the space but normally you're going for efficiency all right well while while we're on the dark side while we're on the dark side, let's go ahead. Let's reach for the Empire as we uh, we finish there. Empire, and uh, let's uh, let's start with everybody's favorite Ace of Legend. Let's go as going going for that Interceptor. We are in a road world now. There used to be a day where Sutra fell in a bid <laughs> was king. And now, if you're playing against other I6s, it's not guaranteed that you move last, but there's also I1s. People have been starting to mess with those. Uh, th there's arguments that Turfreneur now has, you know, increased value, being able to fire at Initiative 5 and do some shenanigans there. Uh, maybe some, what's what's the, sensi the sensitive controls, right? Sensitive Something controls, mm -hmm. yep. All right on the on the lower lower initiative ones um you got the alphas you got nash you got oh yes you know, nash. gideon throwing the four dice which not a lot of people have tried a bunch because he is i think a little expensive you got mm -hmm. sienna re who is another i6 that's actually just very cheap i6 mm -hmm. we know soon tier fell uh commandant goron may be just a dead ship come bump bumping time yeah, <laughs> your own friendly ship, and then you Banned. actually have action. But uh, I feel he'll be he'll he went from uh, hero to zero pretty soon. Uh, Vault Scaris, I think people could try him out a little bit. Might be interesting in road with his passive sensors like ability. Mm -hmm. I I agree. So people would have slapped this in S tier without thinking before. Is it still? As to, Will, Will's is going no. full, nah, not happening. No, no it, it's a solid A. I'll, I mean, I I will agree there. What it can do is amazing. Um, but uh, is it the ship of legend anymore? Unfortunately, no. Sad. I think it's like A plus. A plus, like A plus. It could ease. I could see it definitely getting itself back into S tier. Just have to see it like i can head sim it but I, I need proof i need to see it in the future of the rules i'm fine with it being a for now ryan coming up here saying what have you done for me lately that's what he's saying right now <laughs> what i you get it for me in the future that's Show right what you got <laughs> all right well you know what let's let's talk about something that might might have some more value uh maybe increased value in a world with uh with road tie strikers we got the adaptive ailerons move that uh, is like it's baked into the ship like they're not gonna mm -hmm. just go and say this entire ship is extended though technically they did when they said everything that's not in the black box is not going to be an extended but uh or not a standard um but this ship has been released in the black box so uh, i think ailerons in and of itself is an, it's going to be an uh, a val value going up ability um the thing that holds back two agility dice for health they can go pop pop pretty quickly um my gut says b tier i want it to be a but i feel like i'm lying to myself i think you would be lying to yourself um we haven't seen duchess perform as an ace in quite a while Mm -hmm. A lot of things outshine Duchess right now, especially the TIE Advance V1 Sith. Um, Pure Sabacc has always just kind of been a fun ship. I think Countdown could see more play if the meta continues to stay around that three or four ship list, especially when it's like a feature pilot, like I'm mm -hmm. building around Vader or I'm building around Boba, like a ship that's one ship that's going to do big damage and everything else kind of tries to pick at things. Countdown is a potentially solid piece uh vagabond got cheaper is now the same price as an i1 
throw a three point Connor net on there and just have a dangerous, like I'm going to potentially aileron drop Connor net. Like I'm going to be mm -hmm. a FO bomber kind of. Yeah. Um, I don't think you're going to, I mean, they might still work in mass. You just got to know how to spread them out. You cannot, you are not going to fly these in formation because we're not you probably shouldn't have been doing it in the first place. Bump. It's the, the <laughs> double bump potential is the problem. So uh -huh. people, you got to mm -hmm. learn there ain't to be no formation flying with strikers. Don't do it. Probably Stop. shouldn't have in the first place, but yeah. <laughs> Stop it. All right, there you go. We're, we're going to go ahead and land that in the B tier. Uh, let's go ahead and add, add, grab the, the Aileron's uh, twin here, the TIE Reaper. So now in this black box world, it is, outside of the Decimator, it is the cheapest um, crew carrier for the Empire. Palpatine is a pretty big mainstay. There's a lot of awesome crew in um, in the Empire. Vader, the Grand Inquisitor, Seventh Sister. Also B tier. Nay, yay. Ooh man, uh, for black box, I could go with that. Once we get into uh, more challenging obstacles and bumping rules, I could mm. see the Reaper going. Uh, pretty far down in our rankings. Um, but for now, very good. I mean, we saw Captain Faroff, uh, granted in a different world, but uh, a Reaper uh, doing so good, uh, won a historic championship. So I could see it, uh, the, I could see the argument to keep it into B tier. Um, I think what's going to be even more key is because I don't know if AMG's fully said it or not, while the ships that have been physically released are part of the standard format, I don't think we yet know what upgrades are. We know one of the most featured upgrades on the Reapers is Marcel's hated Admiral Sloan. My, my girl! My muse! <laughs> <laughs> if Admiral Sloan doesn't exist, I think Reapers just get delegated to who gets to be the palp carrier. It's true. Maybe? It's but is, is Sloan black box though? I don't think she's been released in a black box ship yet. I thought she might have given no. the decimator, but she didn't. Uh, no, uh, my sources tell me uh, that's Yasby. Uh, <laughs> According to my sources, <laughs> my sources uh, say that's conversion kit, but it is allowed in the squad builder. So take that up with LBO, I guess. I mean, you could look at more of the hitting power reaper with Major Vermil, but then you're investing potentially Ooh. in some pretty expensive Vader crew, uh, Grand Inquisitor crew. Now, a lot of people remember him, but he had a neat trick with something with uh, Vermil a lot of times with that range one or two reveal dial that he could perform a coordinate on someone else. Um, watch out though for Seven Sister. Do you sure you want to take that red focus action when you bump? <laughs> I'll sure. make you, you cry now. <laughs> yeah, uh, would you like to be tractored or jam that token right off anyway? Sorry, you're just stressed for nothing. So good. Yeah, so good. Pretty powerful right. stuff. Let's go ahead. We'll, we'll leave it. We'll leave it in uh, in in B here. Um, how about you know what? Let's go ahead. Let's go grab some uh, some classic Imperial chassis here. The Tie X one normally we would say you know, vader right but people have been looking at vader and the defender more lately so i feel like the uh the tie x1 is uh you know kind of was on top it, it was like the imperial ship but uh hasn't been really getting looked at they got traded in mm. for the newer model sad i what? mean I I have a strong uh, attachment to the X1. It served me well, mm -hmm. uh, except for the era of false transponder codes. Terrible at that point in time mm -hmm. uh, because it relies so much on target locking a ship. Uh, but in the world with Jinden tracer missiles, uh, that's e uh, easier and easier to get target locks. Um, plus the X-1's favorite upgrade. No, not passive sensors, fire control system. Get that lock, keep it, keep getting mods. Uh, it's, oh man, it's just so good. And that's before we even get to like an afterburner's Vader. Right. Uh, who can just 
tear into uh, ships so well. I mean, I I could be convinced, but I, I would immediately put it into S tier. Oh, into S tier. That is yeah, that S-tier. is that is strong. S tier, easy way to triple mod deal. A thirty. It's, it's true. What, okay. Six point. I, I want generic I, can triple mod its offense. I want to well, argue for the best only. What, I, what, what, I'm what arguing down to A because Jendin does not exist in this format. Mm, ooh, no Jendin. With Jendin okay, is it, it was one of the easiest ways to get those locks right away and be like, look, I'm the E wing now for a turn but you can't be right so okay, that's okay, the only reason enough. why i want to argue it down to a that's it uh okay i i have been convinced without jenden in black box uh it goes in a i will say i'm really surprised that i at least haven't seen or noticed people attempting passive sensors vader in road because theoretically with passive sensors at i6 you have the last actions before everyone starts shooting if you are first player. If you're second player, you're already one of the last last actions anyway. So I'm surprised. Like, even though, yes, it is a seven point upgrade. It's a good think one. That still might be very <laughs> worth it. I'll, I will spend 14 points for two boosts and doing my action guaranteed after everyone else. Love it. All right, well, let's go ahead and grab Vader's other chassis, the TIE Defender, uh, you know, with the with the introduction of Darth Vader, even though we haven't seen Volt Scaris do too much, but maybe in the road world, it's it's what it, it's what we want. It's what we need. Um, we also, I mean, Rexler's always been good. Like, you can't say Rexler's bad. Like, it's just it's pretty solid, uh, pretty solid out there. Is the Defender A tier? S tier, maybe. I mean, it's at least A. Focus right? evade, free K evades. turn every turn if I want to. Yeah, free evades, white K, like that. That's A tier to me. Vader could push it into S tier easily. I think Vader absolutely pushes it to S tier. I, I agree now, if there. You can, if, if you can consistently put a squad together around it that you're confident enough to make it. Through a whole Swiss event to get you to the cut, that's on you. That's to figure the question. Out. Vader can figure out <laughs> yeah. his own thing, though. <laughs> He's pretty yeah. good on his own. All righty, let's uh, go ahead, Ryan. Choose one. We got four four chassis left. Uh, tie V one A tier minimum because fifth brother, seven sister, Grand Inquisitor. I don't know if I could name another ship where every single named pilot is desirable. Yep. Agreed. The generics are all right. Yeah. They got yeah, the, they got the, they, the, they, they got they got bonked on the head though for being <laughs> for being mean generics. Yeah. <laughs> apparently, apparently we all learned that they should cost more than A-wings, uh, which is <laughs> true. That turns out you have more linked actions and a, mm, yeah, more linked actions, we'll say. All uh, right. So, yeah, uh, I agree. Are we all thinking kind of A tier with that? Is there any oh, yeah. reason yeah, it gets for sure. S because yeah. of how good the named ones no, are? Bar- Barons are still so cheap, can find ways to fit in as fillers. And yeah, all the named pilots are, as you said, desirable, like worth putting in your squad, worth building a squad around. So yeah, that's uh, A tier for sure. All right, let's let's go ahead and grab uh, what what I think are the two um, not as loved sh- chassis in the empire right now. We got the Tie Brute, we got the Tie LN, the Line Fighter, uh, the, the classic Tie Fighter itself. Uh, tie Swarms haven't seen them. Tie Brutes actually being useful. We've been, people we've been trying so hard. Been trying <laughs> so hard. Oh man, it just hasn't Greg happened. Certainly have. Fun. <laughs> I mean, I'm. Uh, the, the, man, the Tie Fighter at its best is probably still C tier. I oh, mean, I'm willing to put the brute in the dumpster at this point. That's. I'm I, so I, sad about it too. It's, it should be so good. I want good. it to be okay. Would you, but it's would, not okay. Would you like a one agility, extremely cheap fire spray? Okay. Uh, Actually, but... SF. 
<laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That you have to put a good cannon on to maybe get three <sighs> dice that will actually do three damage and not just damage plus an effect. Oh, man. Yeah. Cannon, the cannon, oh, man, if there's just one good cannon for it, like Sink oh, Laser. Sink Laser, it's just so... <sighs> not enough. It, they, they're, they're, they're cost, they have to cost it higher because it exists on other ships, I think. Mm -hmm. they might just be Agreed. concerned about what the brute i don't know i feel like the brute's so far down just just knock it down some points and see what happens if we get a bunch of things like like what happened with the tie v1 barons and so be it at least medium based chunky ships that will die yep yep and yeah, i think 34 would you would you run <laughs> six naked art uh Brutes? No. Never. No. <laughs> I still wouldn't. <laughs> well, you don't get naked. You get a maneuvering cyst now. Oh, snap. Yeah, I don't get... I get a jamming beam. Yay. Yo, you <laughs> and a jamming beam. Would you run that? No. All right. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know how they can solve the Brutes problem without uh, getting a new cannon into the game. What do you All think? Right. So if, if, if you had the choice between taking a tie Brute and either an Alpha Interceptor or a Striker, would you take the Striker Interceptor over him every day of the week? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Except for Thursdays. There's our problem right there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're more expensive than both of them. Yep. Oof. All right, now he, let's 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 argue a little bit about the Tie Fighter. Uh, maybe Wampa and Gideon have the most use as I mean, the filler ships. I, th I think we could just agree that all of the ones that roll an extra dice are good. Mauler, Mythil, Scourge, Skatu, yep. Yeah. So, I mean, that uh, just puts that's, it... that's what's keeping it out of the dumpster, honestly, is the ones that could roll four dice range one. <laughs> Cold Hard Facts in the chat, hashtag free how runner. She'll never be free again, friends. I, I think she that. has is... been free. It's just, a, just right now, easy <laughs> formation flying ships, not only. Even the TIE Swarm could be flown around really well before Road, but now during Road, with the bump rules, uh, it got worse. Mm-hmm. And last but not least is go get the Chonky Boy, Rear Admiral Sharanu, the Decimator. If you're bringing it, you're building a squad around it, right? Like, there's there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Uh, and you're building it around Rack, because that's the only good one. Maybe Cherinu, not Cherinu. What's the other one? Uh, Mornaki, Mornaki or Oiken. Yeah. Oh, you, you 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 can fit Rack with Palpatine and Vader Defender. That sounds like you're building around Vader Defender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a Vader Defender list. Just with, Rack helps get Vader to the end game. That's all we're here for. <laughs> that sounds like a B ship, the B tier ship yeah. to me. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. All righty. Let's let's keep it going here. Um, let's pull. Let's 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 switch eras here. Let's go Republic. Let's go let's Republic. Say, let's switch to the prequel and swap to what the Empire used to be. That's right. That's mm. right. All right, Ryan. What for, what's the first ship you want to take? Uh, do we start in the high end or the low end? Uh, uh, Aether Sprite S tier done. <laughs> done. It's true. Done. Hey, it's, moving on. Hey. It's true. It's true. It's so good. They, they have force and double reposition. They can get three attack dice or three agility. I'm not sure. I need to say more at and that point. Both of their titles are very viable, or their configuration. Seven B is mm -hmm. viable and probably the one most people reach for. But CLT, even though you're not guaranteed to move last, uh, is very scary. All right. Well, what, yeah. what about the other Jedi ship, the A to two? I think I think A is tier is a great place for it. Uh, the potential is very high, but it is not a put it on the table and start winning games kind of ship. I, I like uh, that's very well said. I like that. It's true. It does take some finesse. Mm -hmm. A lot of finesse, I actually think. But yeah, the the ceiling's potentially high just because it's you could system phase block end up blocking someone and then initiative killing them if you k turned over top of them like so good. not many ships you can do that in the game where you can block and you can move to block someone and also do a maneuver that after them and kill them first oh, man uh I, I do miss they took the cannons away from them didn't they no more auto blasters on them. no more cannons uh i do miss ion cannons on them to ionize somebody block them i miss, I miss my two talent roll. shock t 
mm, yeah rip those cannons but do we think <laughs> so where was the was it just the auto blaster we think was their only concern because i don't know if i'm too concerned i mean it's still really p very valuable to yeah. put a cannon yeah, Mark's, ships anyway. Marksmanship and crit bot auto blaster was and too malice. much for him. But they, yeah, they, and now they, malice. They never got well, to see malice with that combined. I'm sure playtesting was. <laughs> Anakin pretty, was it's Anakin's and, fault. And Anakin's yeah. fault. Yeah, jeez. Yeah, no thanks. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I like I said, I wish they would have uh, slotted it. I don't know how they'll ever make a slot, but restrict slots in it but like i would like to see because canonically they have ion cannons um so <laughs> you just you know, from the so ion may, cannon only slot may, maybe um if you recall they talked about standardized pilots that might have slots that the base pilot doesn't have but you can't customize it so maybe they did they, they say, did hey, talk about that a little bit your... what what do you want? they said yeah they did they did talk about that yeah so maybe there will be an ada that gets a cannon that's the only one that gets it. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. As long as as long as maybe Anna can. Uh, could Anna Cannon not? Oh. Anyways, I tried too hard on that one. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's let's go for the fodder. The fodder of the Republic. The um the V Wing and the um. Oh my god, the torrent. There we go. First it was like we haven't seen these ships so long I forgot the name of it. Um uh, I I think the V Wings actually better than the Torrent. I was hesitant to say that when they first came out. Um but unless you're shooting missiles, I think the V Wings just better. So I, I do not... think the I do think the one value with the torrent is their cheapest generic with a talent slot is cheaper than the generic with a talent slot in the viewing aka dedicated carriers i have found right. some pretty good value in fine just having a cheap dedicated or two i actually like flying two protectors with dedicated as torrents um oddball is is cheap as a torrent missile carrier so there's your missile carrier i think they might be one of the better fodder ships in in the game for their faction right now i think they both could be b tier yeah, I'm I'm I would normally put the torrent in C tier, but uh honestly the uh what do I want to say the the versatility of the named pilots I think actually rises it out of C tier. I agree. I, I think we can probably put the torrent where we put the whisper, that C plus, like on the that, line. Cuz I think I agree if if their best is just just bring a uh like Here's a sh here's just one of one version of the ship and maybe one other and the one the, the best version we're thinking about is just here's the generic that provides my other ships mods on defense which still good rerolls for the Jedi but yeah the, the, there's the, there's the asterisk the little Republic asterisk there you can do better I swear all right uh, now we'll go uh, we'll, <laughs> let's just go ahead and grab that Y wing. Uh, you got broadside, okay? You got broadside yeah. and nothing else in this in this ship. So I don't know how to rate that. Uh, like, I mean, generics, Goji with fuses, but yeah, uh, extreme limitations on versatility, and and that's not what you want to see in your workhorse chassis. Man, if, if I'm matchstick, I just run into enemy ships and bump myself, do a red focus, and be <laughs> double modded now. That, this, right. is, this is true. <laughs> this it's is not true. like my entire list couldn't just lock me in the beginning of the game and have it still count anyway. Right. <laughs> they didn't fix that, right? Like, I'm, I'm not misremembering. That's still no, works. That's, that, that no, still that's works. Le they that's are, legit. They are the one of the few small base ships with gunners as well, specifically veteran turret gunner to mm -hmm. double tamp. Isn't it the only Y wing with a gunner left now? It is the yep. only Y wing with a gunner. And you could put it's a, it's also a cheap seven fleet gunner carrier if mm -hmm. you really want to bring that. And actually so, has the cheapest crew carriers with R two D two. Yeah, oh man, you're you're talking me into B tier, but I hate it. I don't, you don't, you don't, <laughs> I don't like it. You put the rebel Y wing there. 
I'm not, I'm not saying you have to put the uh, in the no. <laughs> it's, it's looking, it's looking at C. It's very close to C. Yeah, I, it's barely getting into B tier. All right. Rick Ole in that Naboo Starfighter. All the Naboos. Um, it just seems. I mean, I mean, or baby Annie. Baby I mean, Anakin is a star for sure. I just couldn't bring, put two Annies. It, it was giving me problems. True, true, true. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you got free abades, um, access to that juicy system slot for fire control system or advanced sensors, even passive control on your little baby Annie. Mm -hmm. uh, it really takes advantage of a lot of its slots, uh, which I think is good. It, it's always sad to see a ship that just like never fills a slot. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm in on Rick and Annie. Like, let's go A tier for sure. Like that ship, what I've seen Marcel do with it, I don't think can be replicated by very many people, but it's uh, it's amazing to see the, the little chassis that can. My, my only like pullback is advanced sensors is not is likely not going to be a legal upgrade i don't believe it's is it legal to play it at lvo advanced it sensors no, apparently, LVO. It, apparently there's no the restrictions two, the two reflexes okay yes. so then with with as of lvo i would i would allow i, I would allow it to be an a but okay. as soon as soon as because uh, we're we're assuming that advanced sensors is not going to make yeah. that standardized cut. No, uh, probably not. Th then then it's going to drop. Then, but yeah, then I, we can get talking down to B or yeah. Once they lose collision detector and advanced sensors in that system slot, yeah, their value goes down. But until then, <laughs> until then, well, and it really hurt baby Annie when the passive sensors the upgrade increased as well. Oh mm, yeah, true. All right, now we got the Chonky Boys. We got the Lat and the Arc 170. Let's go ahead and grab the Arc first. You know, we had the Rebel Arc placed in B tier. Um, we said one of the problems is the cost overall. Um, but does the Republic Arc 170 do more, do enough more for you if you're just looking across the entire game to push it into A tier? I would say no. I mean, it, it relies on its like health and its three attack dice uh, in that faction. One of, I think the, if not the only three attack dice standard chassis in that faction, uh, along with its nine health, uh, really made it uh, the backbone, uh, what are, like the frontline troops mm -hmm. of a lot of squads. Uh, but uh, have we seen any named pilots? I mean, where's Wolf even? We, we um, yeah, talk about like, Wolf. It's, it's sometimes Wolf, but yeah, it's mainly generics. And both generics, too, because some people go up for the I3 to match with Warthog for easier movement and to right. pull for that dedicated as well. Mm -hmm. Right. But I, I fully agree that they're uh, in B, but I, mm -hmm. I, I don't see... I, I would be willing to hear the arguments for A, but I don't... My, my I'm, only... At this time, there is. My, my argument for A is is similar for the reasons for the four like these four rebel ships being in in s is what the job of the arc 170s is to get your main piece which is likely an aether sprite or an eight two to the end game and they do that with three attack die gun and being thick so that that's why i i think on average, if I'm looking across the entire game, the Republic Arc 170s better than the Rebel ones. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Does it take it out of B and A? I put it in low A. That, that's yeah, that's like it's, it's definitely I think a low A. And I think um, what we also have to consider is it's been one of the uh, in, in like you said in terms of the partnering aspect, like the Rebel crop we have up there in S tier. Mm -hmm. This almost gets partnered very often with a lat like Warthog. And a lot of times, depending on how you build it out, those three die shots are actually four at range two to three with seven fleet gunner. Mm. Big deal, especially with fire convergence, right. the rerolls. I mean, you're segueing right, right into 
No, uh, it's my rank- segue night. <laughs> so we're right into ranking that lat right next to it in my opinion i think i agree yeah it's one of the best support pieces you could ask for you got re-rolls you have the potential to get any type of crew because you have two crew slots you can do one or two and two gunner slots is it two gunner slots oh one? yeah two gunner it's two yes. baby i mean you probably don't want to load this thing up but you can set it up however you need it to follow mm-hmm. follow your heart all right, Vagabond. Uh, so Vagabond in the chat saying a little too expensive. I think you just all you need is seven fleet gunner. It doesn't need to shoot a single time during the game to help you win. If you can't reach for seven fleet, <laughs> wolf pack is a good cheap mm, wolf yeah. option just for good so good mods. I mean, you again, you are theoretically you already have fire conversions, but you could just have more rerolls and not have to worry about your fire convergence being drained every turn. You can have that backup target lock. All right. Well, let's, let's go ahead. Our next faction here next, the, the last of the thickums, uh, in, in terms of faction count, we got scum and villainy. Um, a lot of good individual pieces here. Um, let's will, Take take the first crack. What do you I mean, want? I'm 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 gonna uh, I'm gonna start choosing ships that I think will end up higher in the rankings. Uh, so let's start with one that I'm sure will end up in S tier. Uh, that is the fire spray, Mister Boba Fett himself, the Daimyo of my heart, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Boba Fett. Uh, between the, and not just him, but the chassis, white boost, that amazing dial, uh, on a medium base. I got the reinforce when you need to, crew slots and lesser boba, uh, to pack on extra mods or some scummy shenanigans. Uh, did I mention a bomb slot and a rear arc as well to just fly away while dropping bombs? Uh... Oh man, so good. Uh, can't uh, Kashka Frost uh, gives you mods. Uh, what's the other one? Um, Trailix. I really like Trailix. Trailix not played enough. Slap a cannon on him. Uh, get that reroll uh, every time you shoot. So good. Uh, I don't know how you guys aren't putting this in S tier. Up oh, S tier, one hundred percent. Uh, might be the best chassis in the game as it's for people uh, who remember the jump master first edition, no matter what was done to it was always competitive. Yep. That's <laughs> like, that's the fire. It got spray. slapped so many times or shifted or tweaked. The fire spray is that right now, except uh, it hasn't been taken in droves. Only you generally two. we have seen the triple bounty hunters before that has been effective. Um, but it's it's Boba is is the best of it, and he's one of the best ships in the game. Well, that's right. That's so yeah. F- fire sprays on top. Fire fire sprays the uh, the miniatures game. It's it's the namesake. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> uh, All right. You got any? Yeah. Any other potential S or A's out of this pool? Oh, we're just, we're just oh, gonna yeah. go gonna go grab the YV. The Y the oh, YV. Man. Uh, Bosk alone, it, I expect him to tear it up. That's what he does. He's like, he, I'm here to destroy you. And then if you get clever players, uh, they can do nasty stuff with Moralo Evol as well. Even though the Trandoshan Slaver doesn't necessarily perform or, uh, what's the other one? Starts with a T. Uh, Lots I can Razi. Lots Razi. There Neither you go. one of those starts with a T. Uh, there was a T enough. in there. There was a T somewhere in there. There's a lot of T's. Lots. 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 <laughs> All right. Uh, I know that she's pink and she uses, she has like a really dangerous scarf. I know that. Um, but anyway, like those two pilots in and of itself, I think raise it to S tier. Um, it's just super dangerous. If there's a there's a YV on the board, you gotta watch out. And one of the one of the things at first was with the obstacle changes, because remember LVO is using the hard mode obstacles. I was a little worried because that 
Bosk would like to just 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 pile through uh, and not really care about stress and things like that. It's going to be a little bit more dangerous. But the fact that it has a 180 degree arc, I still think it can be viable as long as you're using your other ships in uh, in your squad to uh, to uh, to pr prop it up. So I guess the adjustment I would make here is I would take Boba Fett and put it at the top. At the top of the S, you know, higher, and bring the YV just a little bit lower than it because it does need the support now. Uh, but I still think it is really good. Can't disagree with that. Ryan. Yes. Uh, should we just keep going with, like, large bases? Let, let's let's sure. go big. Go big. Uh, you mean you might this one. The other Falcon. Uh, so we have we had seen recently the trio of scum big base ships with Asajj, Han, Bosk, the triple I Lando. No, not Lando. Thank you, Lando. The triple I fours with the whole Java crew, false transponder codes. That's been busted open a little bit from the points update what versions of it that matter right now it's hard to tell uh but lando is was seen had some value even on the cheaper end because it's only one more point over the generic l337 is the same cost of the generic and then you got obviously the most sought after which is han himself providing with the lando's falcon title and trick shot a lot of extra dice um could occur like you it started out as a two dice attack. You're like, I don't really know if I want to invest a large base ship with a two die attack. But in combination with Han's ability, with Trick Shot and Lando's Millennium Falcon, that two dice can skyrocket really easily. And I don't think you need to invest a ton into him. He's an I six. You could just put a simple crew like Triple Zero is a common one to take. Um, and you can keep him under at or under sixty points and still provide an effective piece which is almost a third of your list. But I don't know how much you're taking this over a Fang, which occupies a similar point cost, but they obviously they do very different things. Um, That's like A or B. I mean, it's hard to go against an I-6 Han boosting with a bunch of dice, but then yeah. everything else just kind of goes eh. Yeah, those rounds yep. where Han's shooting like a two die unmodified attack. It feels bad. Uh, it's real bad. Yeah, it's it's a sad day. So yeah, it's very tough to get it consistent in that A tier. So I would say even yeah, with Han. A, a high B at, at best. Though it does uh make me ask, I know we're talking about OVO, which just doesn't have bump rules, mm -hmm. but uh and I know we don't know official bump rules. But do you get to still roll bonus dice at range zero? You do not. Uh, but what if I'm Sabak, though? I don't get my extra dice. I don't think you do. What if I'm, or Skurg? Skurg can't get his own, his extra dice. Because it's like not it's, like Scorch, because Scorch gets to choose. But like, or oh, Wampa? Like or rolling, yeah. Yeah, does, um, is Wampa getting it? No, oh, no, we'll have to find out. <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that's... because because if it, if you are allowed, uh, that Fal Lando's Falcon title, I think, goes up in value. Then I do think right. Lando's Falcon title is a huge deal. Not only yeah, like whether it's the range zero part, but also just the if you bumped an enemy ship, you're gonna take the red focus and give me an extra die on my attack. Mm -hmm. If you bumped into one of my friends, now I'm gonna get an extra die shooting you. Oh yeah, especially actually, we, we saw uh, the the Han Fen quad jumpers list that did extremely well. I think it actually won it, that tournament. Uh, that had L or sorry, it had four Lom crew on it to actually take away the potential for those focus usage on Han. Mm. So I think and also uh, a really sneaky crew that's cheap, Kira. You want Kira, to not yeah. on obstacles? Must have Kira on Han. Must Value have up, Kira. up, 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 up. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think, uh, just looking ahead to the future, that uh, I would probably put more stock into it once we hit uh, 
2.5 or whatever they want to call it. Definitely more we will see once the bump and the, and the scenarios happen. But for now, LVO status B. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's let's right. uh, let's finish off the large base ships here. Jump Master, Jump Master. Um, I feel like the popularity and use of the jump it, it, it's it's like a roller coaster. Like sometimes it shows up, you're like Nam Lam, uh, Dengar, but it's like the like, and I, I mean this with with love and care. It's usually like the same people playing it. They're like they're just like Dengar <laughs> fans. Like that's just what they do. Um, mm -hmm. I'm. I'm not feeling great about it. The jump master's lack of maneuverability um, in one direction is a problem, I think. Um, especially the way that the the turret works, and it's it's essentially if you're Dengar, you're locked to a front arc. Um, um, I think if somebody wanted to argue me into B, it's l a lower B than the Falcon, but you might argue it to C. I mean, I was prepared for C. Like I, I would like, I would like to talk it up into B, but wow, put put that thing on the table a couple times, uh, and you can see all the flaws it has. Um, the just the maneuverability. It went from in first edition the most maneuverable ship in the game yep. to one of the least. Like it's barely above the lambda these days. All right, so do you you guys okay with that for now? It's kind of it's it's a it's a. Hmm. Mil, I mean, Dengar mil. is scary. Dengar, I think, might yeah. is the only thing that's bringing it up into B. Yeah. All right. Cool. We'll we'll go ahead. And we'll we'll leave it in. Uh, we'll leave it in B. Now let's let's go ahead and take a look at these small base ships. Do we just go ahead? Uh, and, and I I because I think they have to go together, right? Because they they are two of the most popular. Um, scum ships. You got the fangs and the hawks out there. Um, oh, you know I, that I, hawk is S tier. Come on. All right. I mean, so what about the fang fighter? Has has it lost some of its luster? <sighs> Man, the, the then, prevalence. The more and more ships that aren't front arc exclusive, the less and less it it it's gonna be viable. If, if more falcons see play, if more of the RZ, if RZ1s decide to take more of the vectored cannons, RZ2s, mm -hmm. the 180s, and YVs, uh, things want nothing to do with Bosket Range 1 out the side. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no thank you. Um, yeah, I do agree. I think Hawks are S, and I think Fangs are an A. They're slipping. I think they used to be S, but I think they're slipping into A these days. Oh, slipping. Fang Rao. I said might Fang Rao. It might have <laughs> oh. a lot of help on the way with the upgrades. This is true. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When those Mandalorian upgrades come out, back in S. But, yeah, until then. All right. Let's 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 go with some, uh, some ships that have been a little bit lackluster here. The Y-Wing and Z95 and the M3A. We haven't seen too much M3A as of late. Yeah, once the cartel spacers got out of their like 25 points or whatever ridiculous yep. price they were at at some point, uh, they, the, it was, because it, it was never really like Quinn Jest or Genesis Red. It was always a bunch of cartel spacers. <laughs> so I have six with cannons and I'm scary. Thank you. Let's go. Yeah. Um, and I don't, yeah, they losing that powerful swarm piece, uh, has, uh, brought them, I think all the way down to C man, I, I'm ready to dumpster the Y wings. Are, are you, Brian, are, are, please, are, are, are please you, talk me out of dumpstering most of the, these ships. The, 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 so, <laughs> um, the only cartel space right now care about sunny bounder because it's a good filler. Mm -hmm. um but beyond that sorry <laughs> <laughs> um the only the only z95 i care about is bosk with marksmanship similar to similar to sunny bounder also a solid filler piece um y wings i i uh in lvo i think they have less value but as we get objectives into play the usage of ion and bombs being carried around by anything True. is going to be much more 
at least concerning or something you can play around. None of them really stand out beyond Cavill, though, but Cavill's four dice to five dice ion oh, cannon turret okay. is super All right. scary. Okay, all right. Cavill brought it out of the dumpster. Ah, right, there you go. It, it, it's it's also, six dice uh, pocket. Yes, that's it. <laughs> yes, you're right. All right, six, six dice pocket just saved it. Cavill just pocketed the dumpster. Uh, <laughs> now nope. he doesn't have to go with it. <laughs> All right, all right, here we go. Uh, the and I guess for, for people who may not be familiar with why Cavill gets a six die procket, and we never considered this before, is because they just got the missile slot. And Cavill's ability only says when you perform a non front arc attack, roll one additional die, procket is a bullseye off. So non front arc, therefore, six die procket, super fun and awesome. Even Marcel would love it. That's... <laughs> There you go. There's there's the card for for reference, folks. All right. So uh, mining guild tie and escape craft. Uh, let's let's go let's go with the escape craft first. It's there to coordinate or be a nuisance. Um, they they changed because... recently how the you know it's no longer a proton bomb that you can kind of shoot out at will the timing is is different now uh so it's it's there to coordinate um has anyone it, really reached for lando i mean so, sorry we have seen lando use but that was mm -hmm. before the points update right. that dealt with glab and everything else that moved it so I think the value of Lando is because there's a chance you move at the same time of really valuable ships such as Bosk. You can control right. when stuff moves. Right. I think it's still more common that people just go cheaper and go for L3. Yeah. Those are the only two we ever see. Maybe because of the obstacles, people might decide to go the Outer Rim Pioneer. The one that I says, like hey, that. Any of yep. your friendly sh is it any of your friendly ships that range zero to one, or is it only zero to one? Nope, it's zero to one because it yeah, works on the ships of zero to one can perform attacks at range zero of obstacles. Anyway, yeah, that's obstacles. massive. That's huge. That's a great. That's a great way to phrase it. Yes, because uh, now it works with the changes. So does that bump it into a tier? No, or is it just no. a, it's, it's, it's a facilitator? Support, dedicated support facility. It yep. it does this job well and cheap, but doesn't excel at anything particular. All right, and the mining guild tie with these new obstacle rules. Obviously, they're like, "Yo, we can we can almost do almost not not quite. We can almost do whatever we want, right?" So while you move, you ignore asteroids at least the most dangerous of the obstacles, at least for damage. Um, has the value gone up enough for them to actually see play? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm I'm prepared to put that very high on the list uh, because my this is probably a big assumption, but my assumption is that rocks, uh, asteroids are going to be the most common obstacle now. It used to be gas clouds, but I think we're going to see uh, a resurgence in people bring either three tiny rocks or the classic three biggest rocks three biggest uh, rocks or you what? have no <laughs> you, you, you're not brave you're not a pilot get out of Where's here the cojones? <laughs> that's right uh so yeah i i think we will see people going back to three big rocks in as as like the standard if you're bringing like unmaneuverable ships or large bases you probably bring three small rocks but true yeah being able to clear over a rock and uh, because it's while you move, so you can land on a rock and barrel rolled off of it and shoot. You can fly over it and ignore the automatic damage and still get your action. So good. And that's before Dion, before we even talking about Sivor, uh, mm -hmm. who is the jam master, MC Jammer Pants uh, himself. <laughs> that's uh, right. Sivor. <laughs> Uh, that ability of uh, as long as you're not in the opponent's bullseye, you can jam them. Man, so good. All right. I so think, um, also the Ahav pilot, while you defend or perform an attack, if the enemy ship is a larger size than you, so medium or higher, you roll additional die, attacking or defending. I think we're going to see a uptick in in medium and large bases. Um, especially with the gas clouds and more of the circling aspect of some of the turret ships. And also keep in mind that 
because of the obstacle update, maybe one of the only ships that really wants to take Marge Sable Closure is the Mining Guild Surveyor with Marge Sable Closure or any of the ones who have tail us off. Mm -hmm. so, also very worthwhile one point upgrade. So are we gonna we're gonna say A tier? All right, we'll, we'll we'll put it at A tier, and now we can hit the separatists. Separatists here, um, standing. You have played more the droids at least. You have played these a lot more than than any of us. Uh, I'm gonna kind of have you have you take a lead on this one. What what are we thinking? Let's go for our, our main droid boys uh, at first here. My family. <laughs> um. So. So the backbone originals. Let's talk about the vultures. Um, I think obviously anything with grappling struts has potential power. I think using them with any munition other than discord missiles may have decreased in value. Because by the time you're getting those missiles in the list, you're lowering your ship count a little too much. And, the, and even by a little too much, might be seven. I my, my old seven ship swarm with a lot of toys with one less body, we're getting too we're getting really close to when that threshold of I'm okay with you killing one and getting one and a half ships being the kill one, get half on another, and mm -hmm. I can still trade back with you to Oh, you're killing two ships more often now. That's really concerning. So I need more bodies. Um, we don't really see any value other than the two generics, both of them actually. We see the I3 one actually being used more now. It's the same cost as the I1. It'll be meta dependent which one you want to go for. Um, with its prevalence in being a filler or just part of a big swarm uh, and network calculations and. DFS three one one passing those calcs out. I think it's an A. I'm with you there. Um, hyenas will go next. They've had a little bit of a drop off. Uh, four hundred four is just kind of fun, but hasn't really seen much. Um, thirty two C is always a danger. I'm always keeping my eye on lists that could feature him and coordinate at start of engagement, but uh, haven't gotten to the points I need him I need him or what around him to be. Uh, the base ones with plasma torpedoes are always really good in a list that features Dark One probe droids, but I think more and more we're seeing lists where Dark One probe droids aren't... It's weird to say they're not enough. Like, they're really good theoretically, mm -hmm. but they are sort of telegraphing what you're doing, and you need a couple turns to get that set up the way you might really want to. It might be just a different way to play it, but I think right now, at least with the, the major swarm types, the hy the only hyenas maybe we haven't seen a bit are the ones that drop a bunch of prox mines. But they just kind of sometimes make cut and just flame out really early. Yeah. I actually don't... Hyenas used to be S tier too. Like I remember yeah. a while ago we used to put them like way high. I think they might drop down to B now. Oh, that, that, hurt, that hurts talk? me to hear. No, <laughs> you know, it's not crazy talking. It hurts to hear it. But, it's yeah. true. Okay, I just had to be sure. Um, HMPs. Uh, I think they're at minimum A. I don't know if I can call them S tier because I, if they're S tier, that means I would consider them in any squad I'm building. Mm-hmm. Which in separatists, because there's other complete archetypes, is not true. But it's, that's also kind of a cop out because, like I said, other complete archetypes such as double fire spray or things we'll get into. But um, I think at least HMPs are a. They've shown to be good in the four ship variation. I still think there's potential for the five ship, but as long as Defender Vader's around, I think that five ship one loses some of its luster. Uh -huh. even though you're theoretically adding a ship with more attacks but there's still just mainly two die consistent attacks which most defenders can shake off really well um i think a yeah for the yep. hmps tries are showing a little bit of resurgence but not enough for me to say they're any better than a hyena right now they kind of end up performing the same things that i want a hyena to do in most lists which is provide a three die attack that's uh has 
some punch to it where the hyena has that range three plasma torp that could do that extra four damage the try has the range one four dice they move differently they're getting a little more play especially when you can partner up with the trade federation drones you don't need a full swarm as we've seen recently it can be backed up by sort of a mini swarm with a grievous has worked well um but I think it's a B area because it's not something it's it's something you add later when you're considering things you need to fill in or, or a certain job you need it to do. All right. So going going through those droids, now we get to the at least more organics. Um I think I think the Belba Lab is probably a good transition here. You got uh General Grievous and then the other ones that support the swarms if you're gonna bring them I mean, right is is there an argument to put the mobile lab in s tier it has appeared in more separatist list than any other ship specific now i, I am talking specifically solus one grievous yeah but man is that just a power piece for that faction slap it in any list and it probably makes the list better i mean it is really crazy how in some games grievous can just win you the entire game if played oh, yeah. correctly because how much it takes to bring him down if you put him in a position where you say you're either going after grievous and letting my entire other list do whatever it wants and Grievous can just turn, run, and just be ridiculous to try and kill anyway. Or you let Grievous do whatever he wants and that's terrifying because his shots are really scary. <laughs> don't, right? don't do that. <laughs> yeah, please don't do that. And we've also seen Seer have a resurgence too. Yeah. I mean, it's not like Grievous is the backbone of that chassis, but Seer has shown up a little bit better thanks to Isofake. It's true. It's true. Pop pop popularizing that. I mean, is, is that enough to get into A or get it into S Dion? Does does Grievous and Seer do it? Um, how about weak oh man. It sure gets it close. I mean, I I think about putting Grievous in a list as much as I do Bosk in a scum list. The, slapping it in an S. There you go. That yeah. that's I think that that analogy checks out. Mm-hmm. All right, now what about the fire sprays? I mean, the fire sprays. We put I we mean, put they, Boba. <laughs> I mean, they have different but equally as good abilities with higher initiative. Django yeah, with and I six season navigator is just so ridiculous. I hope yeah. season navigator doesn't make it past the ban list. Or the <laughs> list. It's so dumb on Django. Uh, yeah, agreed. Um, so it leaves us with the infiltrator them and the nantex. Oh yes, the nantex. Well, I think we I think we know where the nantex is going. I think the the infiltrator. Uh, well, well, all right. I mean, uh, where where are you putting the nantex? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna I, slap it and see. I don't think it's yeah. like if I'm going across the game. I don't think it's worse than a brute. So I mean, it's kind of looking at what's across. The brute. I would willingly bring a Nantex. I would. <laughs> I think that's what keeps it out of the dumpster. If you're not willing to bring it even for a fun night. I mean, Scott has to pressure me into flying it on his stream. So <laughs> anyway, I've been flying brutes lately. Uh, but yeah, Nantex. I mean, they still have all the tools. Like you still got uh, Ensnare. Still got good pilots. Uh, the cheap... We were correct is one of the cheapest i fives in the game um on a platform that has a turret and a three dice gun mm -hmm. yeah so. we did see for a time even without ensnare they were featured in the zam plus grievous and the thing and that other thing ended up being commonly sunfock or brewer threat that's true um, mm -hmm. and now with tractor tokens or being tractored can't put you on an obstacle anymore doesn't mm -hmm. snare go down even further providing yeah, yeah, yeah. To become even more viable or it stays the same price and it's just less good or it gets banned <laughs> and no fair. one ever has to worry about it again Bingo. don't worry <laughs> like, yeah make make it cheap or yeah make it cheap and ban it do it both <laughs> <laughs> or Kano Lostos. 
<laughs> All righty. And last but not least, let's go in, or in for the separatists here, uh, the Sith Infiltrator. It, it hasn't really seen play. It's uh, the, the heydays of Darth Maul and Dooku firing torpedoes it has been long past. The sun has set on that. Um, is it can Sith... actually re- it, it can resurface. The, it could. could. Yeah. Maul, Maul is still very because good. They, they got rid of the scaling prices on hate. It's just a flat That's cost true. now. That, that used to be hate was nine mm. points on these guys. It's down to four now. So yeah. is that enough to put it in B tier? No, no, <laughs> no. I actually, I can't recommend this ship to people. Uh, as good as uh, trip, or, uh, O66 and Maul are, I can't recommend. Has anyone tried four dark couriers yet? They're 50 points. They went <laughs> no, down. So Has anyone, bad. It broke Please the threshold. No. Has anyone done it? <laughs> Uh, they have a let me know when they hit That's 40 really points. Good, actually. <laughs> At 40 points, Ryan, you've convinced me to fly five of them, but not, All right, we'll, not until then. We'll go ahead and we'll, 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 we'll leave it in C. Now, we're going to hit the last faction here. A uh, little bit of a lightning round here for resistance. Now, here's my question before we do any of them. Is the Thai Brute going to be all alone? in the dumpster maybe i'm uh, trying to think of think of under or overrated ships man, i mean it's, it's so perfect uh, that the stormtrooper is the one side I, here because it's the imperial ship yeah i mean maybe maybe that scumsy but then then again they have illicit slots so we, we, we were pretty close to the this Rebel is close tie. Um, I think we were close to one of these three scum ships here. I, I wouldn't be sad if you put the cartel spacer down there, to be quite honest. Oh, well, or, no, or, or the uh, scumsy, either one. Uh, what's the, uh, what's the, the, the defensive reroll one? Uh, I can't think of the name of it now. Sarasu. Yeah, Sarasu, I think, keeps it out of the dumpster. That's, that's a quality pilot. Still costs All right. too much, though. Like 50, 40 <laughs> points. Yeah, I mean, you get what you pay for. <laughs> a, a four agility I five. I mean, you, you find success with that. Yeah, dude. I think these are gonna be fast because honestly, most of these chassis we've covered something so close to it that uh, we know about where it's gonna land. All right. Well, let's let's go ahead and hit it. We'll go. We'll start with the Falcon. R- Ray mm-hmm. and friends. Now the Rebel Falcon was a Scum Falcon. And um, Imperial Falcon, that's a joke, it's Decimator, uh, were B. Um, yeah. Does, does Ray punching power make it A? Ray is Ray. A. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Ray, Ray saves it. Uh, and the, the things you can do with Chewbacca, I, I think, are keep it as a, as a quality chassis. He mentioned Chewbacca. Chewbacca's good. Chewbacca I, shows up in more lists than Han does. I'm, I'm, I, yeah, I'm aware Chewbacca's good. I've actually tried Chewbacca recently. Oh, Ray Gunner is really good. <laughs> yeah, facts. Republic Y wings. All of our Y wings. Sorry, that's yeah. what I meant. Sorry, it's new, new Republic Patrol. Uh, the Resistance Y wings. We have Rebel Y wings at B. Republic Y wings barely at B. Scum Y wings at C. Yeah. At C. Yeah, it's 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 B. The boost really helps, in my opinion. Uh, the cheap name deal. pilot abilities, like I think they're only like one or more one uh, or two more points than a lot of the. Lega's uh, one of the cheaper ones. Yeah, like Lega's yeah. only two points and gets rerolls for friendly ships that are calculating. Yeah. Akbar's three points. Shaz is yeah. two points more. Chorus is two points more. Like they're all very very They're, reliably cheap and if you right. want to go big zori hurts with wartime mm, loaded. so it's very good very so, good so I, i'm actually i've considered these being a low a low a instead no. of a strong b <sighs> consider it but it's hard to, no. it's weird to put a y-wing in a tier to be quite honest they've been so long since they're gonna put you're gonna put a y-wing that y-wing next to the faux bomber 
Uh, I didn't say next to. I said low. <laughs> I just want to make it clear. I think it's the best Y wing in the game. Uh, we have it. It, it is. It is. Here we I go. I think we can we'll, agree with that. We'll yeah. pull Dutch up. It is now the best Y wing in the game. We're 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 there. We're there. There you go. All right. Um, what about? The pod, the pod. We haven't seen it played too much. Covenel was was the big hotness, uh, carrying Leia out there. People have done some uh, shenanigans with Paymitch, um, that uh, that's been sussed out. What uh, it's yeah. I I struggled to put this in the B tier. The own oh uh, man. I mean, I, I've seen him play it so good. I've seen the potential. Yeah. But on, on an average day, it is going to fail you. I would I would agree. Yeah, All right. It's got that tricky dial, and the Kova with Leia is the one that really stands out. But it's like 54, 56 points, which you're better off bringing the super modded better T70s at this point. And then we get yes. the, the, the the real ships here. Let's take a look at these here. We got the T-70, the, Z, the um, RZ-2, the pod, and the fireball. Now, I would say the fireball is probably the worst out of these four. Where do you want to do with the fireball? Don't put a B uh, tier, though. Yeah, solid, solid B. And our, and our five CAS is still a uh, menace out there. Even a base CAS, like can't yeah. fix the thing but hey at least you get to use your ability when you need to yeah. you don't have a card you can't use the ability Lamps like boost uh but better sometimes it is the so. only it's going to be the only ship in black box with slam outside of mm. a one use slam like the black one title or the intercept boosters from the tri fighters it's got to be mm, some value in that interesting good call um, so you, you mentioned the pod, yeah. Oh, man, is it the pod crazy? Minus Vi put... Marathi, since Vi is not allowed. Oh sure. Is that? Am I crazy to put that in A? I mean, Finn and no, Rose. I think it's definitely A. It's one of the best fillers in the game. Yeah. Okay. I agree. Rose went up in cost and didn't matter. Rose still very good. Uh, the ability to get a coordinating crew on it as well. Man, a lot of potential on such a cheap platform. I'm calling S tier. Yeah. There, chat saying you're muted, Dion. I I agree. One of the things that um that we talked about that's been kind of consistent is S is like I'm gonna build this list. One what are the, the first things you look at? RZ two A wings and T seventy X wings are some of the first two chassis that you look for. Um, I, I think they're both S. Would you guys agree? I, I agree. Uh, they can be built out in a multitude of ways, fill multiple roles, uh, multiple price points as well. Uh, this, oh uh, man, so good. I So T70 is definitely S tier for me. You got everything from Ho Dameron all the way down to even the generics. Um, yeah. I think the only ones that don't, I mean, there's so many pilots for the T-70s. I don't think it's a bad thing to say some of them just aren't taken because you could take the rookie, the blue rookie, the red expert, the black, even the black squadron ace. It's I-4 generic. Uh, we've seen Joff Seastrike out there. Obviously, Bastion, Mimi, Team and Wexley, Jessica Pava, Elo Asti, the other version of Team and Wexley, Nine Nub, and both Poe Dameron's all have been, all have been in lists and done well. So S tier for sure. I is is the RZ one still S tier? Has it dropped? Um, RZ two. I mean, has, has, you... has, has the RZ two dropped to A? I mean, it still You've can take heroic and optics, right? Maybe a little bit of Lulo. Where'd the five A's go? Or even the four with Prockets that Marcel likes to run. I I would say I would keep it in S tier because of what it is. It's a fast ship that can be wherever it wants to be. Um, maybe it's not for the price right now and the punching power, it might not be as good as a T70 X-Wing, but I still think it is it is a staple 
of the resistance diet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the time on target mixed with the maneuverability uh, can make it borderline unkillable in some matchups. All right, so I'm just going to take that T70 and just put it slightly higher than the RZ2. But there we go. Our LVO rankings. Now, well, this is what we're gonna do for sake of time, because I, I'm, I'm getting the, I'm getting the watch. I'm getting, getting the, getting the, the hook off the stage here. All right. Um, is there any single ship that you could see that you, you look at our rankings and go, ah, uh, maybe that actually doesn't quite fit. Obviously, there's probably going to some of the earlier ones as we really got in a flow. Um, for me, taking a quick look, I don't see anything that that super stands out. I think we actually did a pretty consistent and solid job. I think oh, I have what? just one one complaint. Will, yeah, you um, go first. I have one as well. I, I, well, we are going the best that it can be, though. I have a problem with that U wing in a. Same, actually. I really that was yours too that's okay. the same yeah. one yeah and it's it's gotta well, be it's like it's only niche now at which it's being added in those token sharing lists because of the points change to it mm -hmm. and even we were looking at people who had remember as of last week or two weeks ago people submitted lists to us that had u wings featured in it and we tried to find ways to find something else mm -hmm. like because they compete with the hawks Price wise. Right. And the it's Hawks just, are just better. They got abilities clear. that are, are yeah. way, way better. They got Moldy Crow and they, they normally want to take stuff like Jin or so crew. Small base, a lot harder to pin down. They have because Hawks have boost. I don't know how often we're actually like I don't see U Wings being taken in the same breadth as Falcons or even AP five sheet. So I, I think oh, U Wing I is more of a B tier ship. Yeah. All right. There you go. I, 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 I I'm not really gonna fight you on that one, else. I agree. And I is don't. there anything we wanted to put in the dumpster like we talked about or no? Mm. These, what I, what I look at, what kind of my, my mental categorization here is uh, dumpster is like, just don't even, just don't even. C is borderline situational. B, situational. A is a solid ship that you could uh, could be a part of a squad or build around, and S is the first thing you think about when you know you like you know it's a good piece uh, in a in a squad. That's kind of how I look at it. And I think that's what we got here. So uh, everybody at home, thank you so much for for being on this adventure with me, Will and and uh, and Ryan. I think we did an awesome job. I think we did an awesome job uh, doing this. And next week, not because we don't have time. Next week, what I want to do is using our our information here. I want to take a stab at actually ranking the factions in and of themselves. Right now, what what? I'm not going to do it right now. But you could kind of see what we think is going to be the what is the most solid number of chassis in each one uh but i think i think we have a lot to think about this week and for those of you at home if you disagree strongly with what is on this rankings or maybe even just a little bit feel free to let us know in the comments down below on discord let's go ahead and talk about it and uh, we'll talk to you later everybody be smart be safe gold squadron out get your adepticon tickets love you bye <laughs>